everyone, it's Kathy and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm really excited to share a new wall hanging tutorial for you guys. This is actually kind of a part two of my last video, which if you have not seen that, it is me walking you through my planning process for the specific wall hanging I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. So I do recommend going ahead and watching that video just so you guys get an understanding of my own personal planning process. And also because at the end of the video, I'm going to be comparing my sketch to the actual wall hanging and we're gonna see how similar they are. So go ahead and watch that if you haven't, but I mean, if you don't want to, you don't have to. And so let me just go ahead and tell you guys what we're gonna need for this wall hanging. You're going to need something to hang your ropes from. I'm using a dowel rod and mine is measured about 25 inches long. The other thing we're going to need is some rope. I'm using four millimeter three ply cotton rope and I will leave the exact rope I'm using in the description below. My measurements for this rope is 20 ropes I measured about 13 feet long and the remaining 10 ropes I measured about 18 feet long. So let's just jump right into it and get started. Our first step is to fold all of our ropes in half and attach them to our dowel rod using a lark's head knot. And I'm going to attach the 10 longer pieces right in the middle. are all 30 ropes attached to my rod using a lark's head knot and again the 10 here in the center are my longer ropes and now our next step is to find the center of our project and we're going to tie one square knot right there in the center Now I'm going to tie right underneath rows of alternating square knots and I'm going to do this until I have six rows. And once you have six rows done, this is what your project should look like so far. So we have a nice triangle starting to form. And before we finish making our giant triangle, I'm going to go in to the sides here and I'm going to cut in a little small kind of half triangle pointed that way and then obviously pointed the opposite direction on this side. So we're going to start on the end here and use these four ropes to make our first square knot. Now I'm going to start cutting in triangles following kind of a diagonal line by making alternating square knots and moving to the right each time.
and we're doing that six times and our goal is to have the six square knot line up with our six row of this triangle. And now I'm gonna come in and cut in five more square knots, this time going down and diagonal to the left. So I'll start over here using these four ropes and start that diagonal line. And that is what it should look like once you have it all finished. As you can see, I have a triangle that points this direction. And now I'm just going to repeat this pattern on this side. And there we go. So now I have two mirror images of those sideways triangles. And now I'm going to come in and do another row of square knots right here for my big triangle. Now on our eighth row, we are going to do both square knots and berry knots. So the first two knots of row eight will be just normal square knots. So let's go ahead and do those. Now we are going to make four berry knots in a row. To make a berry knot, I make three square knots directly in a row. And when I make the first square knot, I like to leave a little bit of a gap up top. And now again, I'm just going to repeat this three more times. After I have all four of my berry knots, I'm going to do two more square knots on the right end. Now I'm going to repeat the same process, this time only doing three berry knots. So what we're doing with our berry knots is we're just making a smaller triangle going the opposite direction inside of our big triangle. And now I'm just going to finish my big triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of it. Again, we're gonna do another two berry knots and then right under that, one berry knot to make a smaller triangle.
And here is what it looks like now that I have my big triangle all finished up. So as you can see, I have 15 total rows of square knots and each row is one square knot more than the last. So we start with one, then two, then three, then four, and so on. And my berry knots here on rows eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mirror image of this top half. So I'm going to leave about two to three inches of space and then I'm going to do a row of 15 square knots all the way across and make a triangle going downwards. So it's just a mirror image of what we did up here. So starting with the four ropes here on the end, I'm going to complete one square knot and then just do a whole row so that I have 15 square knots total. we make our row of square knots here, it's very important to go slow and carefully so that we make sure our line of 15 ropes are even all the way across. And that is what it should look like when you have your row of square knots done. And now I'm just going to cut back in and do more rows of these square knots. Now, once you are on your fifth row and you've done five square knots, we're going to do one berry knot directly in the middle. So again, that's on the fifth row. After you've done five normal square knots, we'll do our berry knot. Then I'm going to tie the rest of my square knots, so that would be five normal square knots on this side. And now on the next row, there's going to be two berry knots in the center. And again, we are just making a mirror image of this down here. So our square knot triangle just is the opposite direction of the one we did up top. And here is what my second triangle now looks like all finished up. So I have my berry knots pointed upwards and the big triangle pointed downwards. So this is a direct mirror image of what we did up top. So let me show you what it looks like all together so far. So this is what it looks like with both triangles. And so my next step now is to recreate these side triangles down here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make my first square knot so that it lines up with row 5. And I'm going to do it right here on the right end.
Now I'm going to move down in a diagonal line and make five more square knots. Once you have six square knots going down to the diagonal, we're going to go the opposite direction and we're going to make five square knots coming down like that. And here is what it will look like when you have both side triangles done. Now when you're making these, try to just go slow and careful because you're going to want these to line up as best you can. And now let's move on to the next step of the wall hanging. Okay, so now my next step is I'm going to go down about five or six inches and I'm going to do zigzag lines all the way across. And I'm going to have five knots in each zigzag. After you have four square knots done, we're going to have to come in from the other side to go down to connect to our fifth one, because if we make a fifth one and then go up, you can't connect it. So we're just going to have to pay close attention to make sure everything's level and just go from there. I'm also going to be counting the ropes I need to do four more, so these four here make my fifth one then two for four, two for three, two for two, and two for one. So these right here should all make up the first one and this grouping of four. And that is what it looks like now with my zigzag lines. I went back and forth trying to decide if I wanted to do another row of those zigzags directly underneath, but I decided to just do one so it matched those side triangles. Um, but that's kind of a personal preference, so if you wanted to add a little more zigzaggy lines or just double layer it, then you can go ahead and do that. 
And my final step is I'm just going to cut my ends to make my fringe. And I think I'm gonna do about, oh, eight to 10 inches. I'm gonna measure it and decide, and I'll tell you guys what I did after. And now I'm just gonna go through and unravel all my ends. This is optional, of course, but if you've been following me for a while, you guys know I love to have the wavy endings in my wall hanging, so that is what I am going to do. This is my wall hanging, guys. I am really, really proud of how this turned out. I personally think it's pretty cool and I love it. So I'm really proud. So if you remember in our last video, I actually sketched out this entire design and showed you my planning process for this piece. And so I'm going to show on the screen just a comparison of my sketch to the wall hanging so we can see how close they turned out. And as you can see, they were pretty similar. So I made just a couple changes. One of those was instead of doubling up the side triangles, I decided to just do a single triangle just because I, it's pretty small, so I didn't want to like overwhelm it with doubling it up. If I had made this maybe wider so that there would have been bigger triangles, then I probably would have doubled it up. And the other thing that I kind of changed my mind about was originally I had said I was going to do five rows of berry knots, but I ended up doing it four just because I thought the proportions would look better that way once I started tying the actual project. So those were really the only differences I made. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun making this wall hanging or just watching me make this wall hanging. And I hope you guys found some inspiration from this and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!